Hello and welcome to my podcast, Knee Deep in Stitches. My name is Danielle. For those of you who don't know me, hi, welcome. I'm so glad you stopped by today. Today we are on episode four of my knitting podcast. I do want to apologize that this is going up kind of late. I um, had meant for it to go up last week, but I kind of hit a... Um, snag in my mental health and had to take a step back and kind of just focus on doing things which also helped me get a few of my projects finished i'm also going to be because i have a lot to talk about today so on my phone here i just have talking points and things that i'm going to go through and talk about so i want to start off with new things that i've casted on so the first things that I've casted on, and I think this will come as kind of a surprise to some of you, um, some of you maybe not, <laughs> because if you follow me on Instagram, you kind of have an idea of what I'm working on, what I cast on, and things like that. Otherwise, um, if you don't, you don't really see this, but I have a pair of vanilla socks. Right now it's just the cuff. I have a little bit more of the cuff on this one than I do this one. Sorry, they're getting tangled. Um, vanilla socks on Magic Loop. I am using the Chow Gu Red Lace and these are US size one 2.25 millimeter Chow Gu knitting needles. I actually really like these. I just recently got into sock knitting and it has been a lot of fun. I use the... Um, I was trying to do them on double pointed needles, which I'm very capable of, but then I got into watching The Crazy Sock Lady and I was watching one of her Magic Loop tutorials and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it. So I tried it with a bigger yarn using my Knit Picks needles and then I noticed a lot of sock knitters use these Chow Gu and I was like, okay, why not? We'll see. So I did pick some of them up, which I'll talk more about in my acquisitions. But I split the yarn up into two 50 gram balls here, so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm using the um, Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight in Macadam, I think. Um, and this is an 80% fine Highland wool, 20% polyamide, so nylon. So it, it works really well um, for making socks. Um, this is a toothier wool yarn for sure like the texture of it is not as soft as some others um but i like it so far for his socks and i like what's happening here this one i've started knitting a little bit of the leg um i'm using my stitch markers this was so that i knew where the front was and then this was counting my rows of rib stitches on this one, I just need, I think it's two more rounds of ribbing, and then I'm able to start the leg. I'm doing 20 rounds of ribbing in the two by two rib, just because I am not somebody who likes to knit one by one rib. So that is my latest cast on. Then the next thing I have casted on, and these are just gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I am working on doing some very fuzzy house slipper socks. And this is out of this yarn here. This is the Caron Latte Cake. Um, and this is, what is it? I think it's like, yeah, 58% acrylic, 42% nylon. Um, these are definitely going to be lounging socks. I would not suggest like wearing them. But what I'm doing is I'm using, um, this is a Chagu size 2, and yes, this is a bulky 5 weight yarn, um, but I'm doing it because I want the stitches to be closer, and this is a project that I've, if you follow me on Instagram, um, and my Instagram is knee deep in stitches, I'll have it linked down below if you're interested. You'll notice that I started off with the pink color that is in this cake, and then I ended up having to frog it and it got stuck together because I am using 
a much tighter gauge than this yarn actually requires um, so but it still has a lot of give and stretch I've tried it over my foot I've cast on 44 stitches and I've only done 10 rounds of ribbing sorry my dog is barking at our robot vacuum that is not on it is her mortal enemy <laughs> um, I'm gonna go grab her really quick and I'll bring her in here she can chill out for a second give me one second and I'll be back to talk more about what I'm working on <laughs> okay sorry about that if you hear any like color noises or anything she is in here um, she's actually afraid of the camera and the light I have on so she probably won't come over here she might I don't know she's checking everything out <sighs> Her name is Osa and she is a lab husky mix. She's very sweet, but scared of everything. And she's right here. Come here, Osa. Yeah, let her settle. Okay, back to <laughs> what I was talking about. So this is a very nylon yarn. It's not one that I would wear in shoes or really wear on hardwood floors. It's kind of more my feet are cold I want to put something on and I got this idea by watching um, yarn at play uh, her podcast and um, I'll link her down below she was doing a review of this and I was like oh my gosh I have four cakes of that I do I have a lot of this yarn and <laughs> um, I wanted to make something with it I've made a cardigan in the past out of it and I can link a picture of that. It's not the greatest construction and it was crocheted. Um, but then I was like, those would make great slipper socks. And just kind of watching her do her review, I kind of got this idea. And I even commented on her video, I think I'm going to knit some slipper socks out of that. And so this idea was born. It has not been the easiest <laughs> thing to work on it's been a little bit tricky and just kind of trying to get get it to work um, and again these are US size 2 2.75 millimeters and it's just kind of playing around getting it to work the way I want it to because I'm hoping to actually be able to gift some of this um, for Christmas I think that would be really fun to give out some slipper socks and I will keep you guys updated on how that is going it's definitely a trial run and I'm really just using uh, the crazy sock lady K's um, vanilla sock pattern I'm not doing anything crazy with it um, except for I've kind of changed the ribbing and what I'm doing along those lines so those are two new cast-ons. Let's talk about projects I've frogged. So as you guys know from the previous podcast, I was working on a baby blanket and I have recently frogged it. I was not enjoying the process. I think I'm actually going to crochet the baby blanket instead. I have not started that. I plan to, um, but I have not started it. Sorry, my dog's like right here and it's really funny because this is the closest she's ever gotten to the camera. Um, but I frogged that and I also frogged my Laura hoodie I was working on. I just was not loving the process and I have a lot of other things that I prefer to cast on and work on. So that's not something that I'm going to, um, continue using or working on. Um, I've, I've stored some of the yarn away because I have a lot of other things and a lot of other yarns, as you guys can see, that I'd much rather use. So that's kind of what's happened there. Um, but those are my two latest cast-ons plus the two projects I've frogged. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and talk about are some whips. So the first one, and it's still kind of a work in progress. I don't know if I showed this last time, so this might actually fit better in the new um, new cast on category. But I'm working on, and I'm, I'm doing it in pink because I just love the idea of using up my pink yarn. And I'll link what yarns I'm using. They are just the Joann's Big Twist value yarn. I bought a lot of this when it was on sale and it's just been kind of sitting there. And then I saw 
um, Bag o Day, Crystal from Bag o Day Crochet, working on this in one of her tutorials, and I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to make. Um, and so far, I'm really liking how it's turning out. I'm really liking the bobbles and the stitch pattern and how open it is. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's her summer top and I'll link the tutorial and Crystal's channel down below. Any YouTubers or podcasters I talk about I will list down in the description box um, but I'm pretty sure a lot of crocheters and knitters know who Crystal is because she does wonderful yarn reviews um, and tutorials. So that is what I'm working on. This is just the front panel and I'm alternating between this lighter pink and the darker pink and I'm absolutely loving how it's turning out. I'm just doing three rows of each. I'm going to make this probably a bit shorter than what Crystal made hers, um, and I'm going to do more of a cap sleeve and a tighter in neckline just because I don't really like how wide the neckline is. That's not something that I would typically wear, um, so I'm, I'm going to be altering, altering it a bit. Oh, I'm also crocheting this on a 5.5 millimeter hook and this is more in line with like the boy hooks these are some hooks that I got because they're ergonomic and I just like the way they feel and I bought a set of them so there's that whip okay the next one is my crochet or my knitted not crochet <laughs> my knitted throw blanket which um oh well that's fun I lost some stitches. I love when this happens. It always happens on this one too, and it's probably just because I'll fix it in a minute. But this is actually going to become a languishing whip. I feel like I will work on it more um, once it cools down here in Arizona. It has been so hot and so humid and we've had the craziest monsoon season that we have not had in a long time that I am just not feeling like having something this big sit on me. I, am, I did work on it a little bit. If you can see where that stitch marker is, I did about four rows um, because this whole thing is just in garter stitch. Um, so it's going to be put into hibernation. I'm going to let it sit for a bit before I knit it. Wow, that was a fun sentence to say. Um, and then I will come back and I will work on it and I will um, hopefully finish it this winter. That's kind of my goal. I just, again, just don't want it sitting on my lap. So this is going into hibernation. I also just have a lot of other things that I prefer to work on currently like there's a lot of um different things that i've been seeing that i'm just like you know what i'd rather work on this than do this so that's kind of the thought process there um the next one is my dish towel which i have worked on a little bit um not as much but if you see where that orange stitch marker is to where it is, it's going to get done. I'm going to finish it. This is more of a work on this before work, work on this um, while I'm in the car. But I think sock knitting is going to take the place of me doing a Tunisian crochet dish towel. Um, but I'm going to finish it. I want to finish it. I would like to have one more because currently I have four or three of these and this would be the fourth and it would just be easier to kind of rotate through them and not have as many um, paper towels being used in my house. That's kind of my, my hope with making these is to make paper towels a little bit more obsolete in my home. Um, so I will be making more in the future. I just need to find that Tunisian crochet mojo. I have a lot of crochet mojo and a lot of knitting mojo, but no Tunisian crochet. And I think it's just because Tunisian crochet does take me a little bit longer. Um, it's a lot of fun. I learned it over <laughs> Christmas when I had COVID um, and I taught myself how to do it. And because my mom got me a book and some Tunisian crochet hooks and some Tunisian crochet afghan hooks and things and so I've just been wanting to get more into that. 
The next whip, I know, I have so many whips, you guys, and it's it's going to be a constant thing with me. I get an idea and I have to start working on it. I am not a monogamous knitter at all <laughs> or crocheter. I'm like, wait, I have this idea. I must do this. So the next one is going to be, oh, the, um, I have it in two panels currently, but the patchwork cardigan that I'm making for my friend, um, I have the bottom portion of the cardigan all done, and yes, I'm going to have 9,000 ends to weave in, but I think I'm learning a lot while doing this. I absolutely love this cardigan so far. I love how it looks, and I have part of the arm portion done. I need to seam this to that, and then I would say I have about 45 more squares to seam together because I think I made 110 total to um, make this fit her and then I need to do the ribbing, weave in all the ends and then it'll be done. Um, this is probably going to take me a couple more weeks to finish. I am joining them by doing a single crochet. Um, I like the way it looks, my friend likes the way it looks. I know not everyone likes the raised edge. I just thought it, it, it gives it a little more texture and with all of the colors and different things, I just, I love how this is turning out. Um, it's a labor of love and I'm my friend is so excited to get this cardigan. I have not kept it a secret from her. Um, these colors really made me think of her and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this for her. And she is so, so excited. And um, I will say, that I, as somebody who likes to create things, am very, very um, appreciative of when people accept the things I want to create for them or, you know, are like, oh, that would be great, but could you make this instead? Like, I'm totally fine with that. Like, if I'm offering to make somebody something, I'm totally down for it. Um, <laughs> I have a hard time when people that I offer things... Um, to make for them when they're like oh no I don't want that like it, it's kind of like okay are you saying I'm not good enough at this is there a different issue you know all of that um, but I'm learning to put that more on them than on me and I'm finding people who are going to be appreciative of what I'm creating for them um, versus people who are going to not be appreciative of the item or not use the item as intended um so it, it's it's a struggle for me i love to make things for other people and i'm you know if i'm willing to i i'm i'm not always willing to make everything that everyone comes to me to make or i'm like you know you're gonna have to pay for that because time supplies figuring out a pattern, all of that. But um, I guess what I'm just saying is, like if somebody who's creating something is offering you or gifting you something, you have to understand that they're doing that out of the goodness of their heart and willing to um, gift you not just an item, but their time. And that's a really big deal. And it's something special and it's something you know that they're just wanting you to be a part of um, and most of the time I would say yes I want people to use it but it's also like if I'm offering it's also because I'm trying to get better at a craft and I need more the more ability to work on something so yeah I don't know if that made sense sorry for all of that rambling but there we are um, the next I guess the final whip I have going and this one's going to be kind of a longer whip as well because I don't know if after this cardigan I'm going to want to make this top or right after but I still only have these five granny squares for my fall um, top that I'm planning on making I just yeah they're, they're just they're just chilling there um, I will get back to that I swear <laughs> at some point I just I've made so many granny squares for my friends patchwork cardigan that I'm just like I don't know if I can make more granny squares okay so that is everything 
whip wise let's talk about my finished objects because you guys I actually have some finished objects I know who am I the first one and this is one that I am so proud I finished and I'll insert a picture of my husband wearing it because I, I finished it and I would say that like the collar portion of this here I'll show you but I finished my husband's Weasley sweater. I am super, super proud of this. I worked really hard on it. And the collar portion, which is something I typically struggle with, I think looks so, so good. Like I finally figured out how to pick up those stitches and make it work. And I, oh, I just, I'm so happy that this is finished. I, I can't believe it's finished, but it's finished. It's done. I, completed my husband's Weasley sweater. Ah! But it's done and it's going to, until it cools down here, it's going to be sitting in his closet. I told him not to hang it because I don't want the stitches to stretch out. Um, the one thing I would say is my um, duplicate stitch on this and I think it's because the yarn I used as the base and what I chose to use for the dupl duplicate stitches um, I would say I should have stuck with the same yarn that I used to make the sweater I used Lion Brand's um, basic stitch um, anti-pilling yarn because he liked how soft it was and then to do those duplicate stitches I like an idiot decided to use the Caron Simply Soft I already had in my um, my stash which I would say was a big mistake because there is a lot of yarn splitting and it's not even and it, it's just a mess but I mean you live you learn and I won't be doing that again I can I can assure you that that will not be something that I use um, for a sweater like this ever again to do duplicate stitches but it's done and I'm super super proud of myself the next thing I want to talk about that I am proud of myself because I finally figured it out and I finally made a pair of socks are going to be my first ever pair of socks so I used um, I use Patton's Croy, uh, their sock yarn. I can't remember the colorway that I used, but, um, and they're not like perfectly matching and I'm totally okay with that, especially these being my first socks. I used my Chow Gu US size 2, 2.75 millimeter knitting needles for these. And I did 15 rows of ribbing for the cuff. I did a 30 row stockinette um leg these are based off of the crazy sock ladies um knitting pattern her vanilla socks and um i would say the foot if i remember correctly is about 45 inches before i start decreasing for the toe um so that's kind of what my sock is they fit very well I'm I'm going to be using these more as lounge around the house socks just because they were made with a size 2 and the gauge is a little bit bigger and so they they fit like they'll stay on but they're not quite as tight around my foot as say the US size 1 would probably make them if that makes sense but these are done and I'm super super proud of myself I'm so proud of myself I cannot believe that I actually turned a heel. It felt like magic. I made socks for the first time and they turned out pretty well, pretty decent. They fit me. I was showing um, friends pictures and stuff and they were like, those are your first socks. I was like, these are my first socks and they couldn't believe that I had actually done it. There are a few areas where as I'm looking, I could have um, done things a little bit differently, a little bit better. But I figure the more socks I make, the better I'll get. So I am now a sock knitter and obsessed with knitting socks. It's, it's become a thing and um, I blame the internet and YouTube for that. <laughs> the final thing I finished, and I will insert a picture of me wearing this as well because I am so happy that I finished this. 
and it's completely done. The ends are all woven in, but I finished my neon stripes oversized cardigan and it is super comfy. I'm so proud of it. I can't wait until it cools down and I can wear this because I created it and I will be wearing it. I am so proud of it. I put pockets on it. I did the whole thing. Um, I, I mostly finished this because I, I'm part, I'm taking part in Nitty Natty's, um, fall garment make along that she's doing. And I was like, and whips were allowed. And I was like, okay, let's do this. So I finished this because of that. Um, and I got really motivated to finish some whips, which is why I finished my husband's Weasley sweater that I was making. And this is my own kind of design, my own pattern based off of cardigans and sweaters I've made for myself. And so I just kind of took elements that I loved of that and made a cardigan. And I, the only thing I'm, I'm tempted to do is just put some buttons for fun on here. Um, some neon buttons. I, I think that would be a lot of fun, but I completed three projects. I have three finished objects and I am just raring to finish more. I am super, super excited. And I'm also curious what items have you finished please leave a comment down below i would greatly appreciate that also like this video and subscribe if you have not already okay moving on let's talk about some things i've acquired what have i added to my knitting stash my knitting notions it's a lot it's a lot a lot the first thing I'm going to talk about that I recently acquired are some new tools and <laughs> I just dropped it, but this is the BCM run crochet hooks and they come in this cute little bag here. Um, they are varying sizes and I'm using one on a couple of different projects currently. I can't find, there's one missing, um, but they come in from a 2.25 all the way up to a um, 10 millimeter crochet hook. And I like the way they feel. And I also like that they're very similar to, um, here I'll hold this one up, but they're very similar to a boy crochet hook, which is my preferred crochet hook. So I picked those up and I have been using them. I believe it's the 5.5 and the six millimeter that I can't find right now. I think the six millimeter is with the other um, things that I'm crocheting together for that cardigan. But yeah, I, I like them so far. So far, so good. I'm looking at my list, making sure I have not forgotten anything. The next thing that I picked up are sock blockers because I am now a sock knitter and needed some sock blockers. So um, these ones have little leaves and stuff on them. I'm not going to take my socks off. And then these are just more plain sock blockers. I'm probably going to pick up a few more just because I'm intending and um, being overly ambitious with the amount of socks I want to make because I'm planning on knitting some for family members. I, I'm just going sock crazy people. It, it happened. I got the sock bug. <laughs> um, then I got four different sets, or yeah, four chow goo needles. I have two that are in the US size one, 2.25 millimeter, just because I, the 32 wasn't available. And then I have two of the US size two, 2.75 millimeter, and they are also on the 40 inch. Um, for Magic Loop, and I still, you guys cannot believe that I figured out Magic Loop. Thank you to the Crazy Sock Ladies tutorial because that is how I figured out how to actually make Magic Loop work for me with doing socks. And, because I was trying it, trying it, trying it, and then the Chow Goo just made it so much easier. The, like, I love how easily you can manipulate the cord on those four socks and for smaller circumferences, I can see why people gravitated towards those. I really, really do. And I'm glad that I picked them up. Um, then I have my husband surprised me because I do also sew from time to time and I have an idea of what I'm going to be making with this fabric. He bought me Star Wars Mandalorian um, fabric as well as Harry Potter fabric. And I think I'm going to make myself 
a couple of project bags out of these um, just to carry some of my projects because I don't have a ton of project bags and it's a yard of fabric which is enough to kind of make what I have in mind the only thing I'm gonna need to do is pick up a zipper because essentially I'm making like a giant pouch and um, I might be able to get two of each of these out of here, but I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, then, what else do I have? Okay, so I picked up some yarn because if I go to Walmart, I have to go down the craft aisle. It's just a part of who I am and what I do. But I picked up some Lion Brand Summer Nights. Um, this is a size one, super fine. In, this is in Castaway. It is. It has 437 yards. It's 82% acrylic and 18% polyester. And I thought this would make a beautiful shawl. So I picked it up in this blue kind of purple gray um, colorway. And then I also picked it up in this color. And this color is Tropical Punch and it definitely is tropical. I, I really do like it. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I've picked up from that. And then I, I have more yarn. Just mm more yarn and I I have ideas of what I'm going to be using this yarn for so yeah okay so the first let me move some of this the first I have here um, a lot of this is from Knit Picks or Hobby Lobby um, and I'll let you know this is from Knit Picks it is their gloss lace weight um, yarn in wharf i actually have two of these i don't know where the other one is i'm really hoping one of my dogs didn't get it um and then i also picked up three of this darker color and this is in river rock i am going to be making let me get the name of it um with this i'm going to be making because i have the star wars knitting book i'll show you that here um i got it for christmas Um, and it is the General Leia Organa, nope, not that one, sorry, lied. Um, it is the Rebel Alliance Shawl um, by Susanna Icy using lace weight yarn. So this is um, what I'm going to be doing with that. I also have, because I'm going to be adding beads to it, I picked up two different colors of beads um, because I'm going to kind of play around with what I want to show there. So I have all of this for that project and I have not cast it on yet. I need to wind everything and get that going. Then I have some more from Knit Picks. This is enough to make a sweater. Um, this is the Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering uh, Weight Yarn in the Pearl. And this is what it looks like. I love it I thought it was so beautiful and they had their like blues sale so I picked it up during that um, and this is going to be and I'll insert pictures of all of this by the way if I, I didn't say that before um, but I'm hoping to do the Le Pouf cardigan by Bita Jezik um, using this yarn because I just I love the way that cardigan looks and I also just kind of really like the colors of this yarn. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and I just can't wait to see it all knitted up. Then the next yarn I'll talk about is this right here. This is called Veiled Amethyst. And it is from Hobby Lobby. It's their Yarn Be Authentic Hand Dyed Yarn Blend. And this is, I believe, what is it? It's 50% superwash merino wool and 50% lyosil. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I saw it and I was like, I have to have it. Um, because it is hand dyed, you have to kind of expect some differences. These are the same kind. So I'll probably be alternating skeins just to kind of keep everything together. But I, I do think it's absolutely gorgeous. And what I am hoping to make out of this yarn here is going to be 
the uh, Le Pouf sweater by Bita Jezik, um, and I want to use this because I just think that would be gorgeous. And I'm also probably going to be picking up just a tonal, like in a gray or black, um, to kind of do the sleeve portion towards the cuff. But yeah, that's what I'm hoping for that. And then the final yarn I picked up is also from Hobby Lobby, um, their Yarn Be Authentic. And this colorway is called Farmer's Market. And I thought it would make a beautiful, 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 beautiful flax light sweater. Um, also fall sweater. I just think, oh, it's so pretty and I can't wait to kick it up and use it. I have all of these plans to make things. Um, there's one other, and this isn't new yarn. Let me just grab one of these. So, and I'm using this for socks for my husband currently, but I want to make another pattern out of the Star Wars book, and it is the General Leia Organa pullover um, that I want to use, and it actually uses DK weight, so I'm probably going to kind of alternate the pattern um, to make it work for fingering weight and I'll figure all of that out um, and I'll let you know how that goes if if and when I cast that on so that is everything I have finished everything I'm currently working on as well as a few things that I frogged um, everything that I've picked up which is a lot in the last couple of weeks since we've talked and kind of just things that I want to cast on. I'm going to work on finishing a couple of other things before I go ahead and cast anything new on. I, I kind of want to have a few finished objects um, of things that I've been working on a lot lately. Uh, so yeah, what are you currently working on and have you finished anything uh, new or, you know, have you, have you finished any any lang languishing whips like I did? Or, you know, you found a, a unfinished object and you're like, I'm gonna finish that. Have you done that? Let me know in the comments down below um, what you're working on and if you finished any of your projects. If you guys could go ahead and give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it. I do really, really love interacting with you guys down in the comment section. It is so much fun, and I am so excited to see where this channel goes and to see what other things I learn how to create and what I create. So thank you guys again. I hope you have a wonderful night, day, wherever you are, and bye.